Hi everybody, welcome back to another CYT Crypto episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison and today we'll be going over the huge news that is Bitcoin is over $7,000. We said it was going to be a good weekend, it was a good weekend, um, but where to now for Bitcoin, where to for the alts? So we're going to change things up a wee bit. I'm just going to make sure we're live and everything is up and running okay. So yeah, we're going to change things up a wee bit. So I'm do going to do a CYT Crypto Live show and that's really for you just talking to you because i love talking to you in the morning having a cup of coffee so it's coffee and crypto in the morning just chatting to you looking over the charts and looking over a couple of news stories that'll be it but i want to do a dedicated um, recorded video just for the news alone so i'll be doing a, a say 15 20 minute video and um, just for the news and any other things i can uh, that i'm going to talk about could be trading tips or anything like that and maybe later on I'll do kind of 10, 15 minute interviews with some CEOs of projects as well. I've always wanted to do that. Um, so this section in the morning, the CYT Crypto Live, is to look at the charts, couple of news stories, and look at the charts that you want to see as well, and talk about projects that you want to talk about as well. Now, I'm just going kind of almost full time with crypto. I'm flipping things just now. Just now I was 25% in crypto, kind of spending my time 25% in crypto, and 75% on my other parts of the business. I'm flipping that on his head and going 75% in crypto, 25% in the other sides of the business. Now that still means I'm kind of I'm, I'm full time in crypto because I work about 60, 70 hours a week um, in total. So I'll do about 40 hours a week in crypto and about 20, 25 hours a week in kind of the other sides of the, of the business as well, which is writing books and doing the social media side of the business as well. Still love doing that. Um, I'm just kind of flipping it just now and I'll be doing a launch of the crypto program um, in July and you can get on board with that as well. I know that the launch for the crypto program that I've got is, um, is for, it's kind of for beginners but it'll have trading strategies in there as well. They'll teach you how to kind of set up an account with Binance, how to kind of um, get started trading with crypto and then go on to kind of teach you the kind of basics of trading, TA things like that as well. So if you're not interested in that, obviously you've joined the premium program, which you can do as well. That's an upsell from that. But you as a viewer as well, you can get 50% on uh, affiliate commission on the actual crypto program, the beginners program. So you could get $98.50 for every person you refer as well. So that'll be coming out in July. So big things happening with CYT Crypto. But, and this is the first of it. So I'm doing a CYT Crypto Live and then we'll take it and from there so i'm just going to see if we're in and just now we are and we're kind of live so who's in this morning juan antonio is in welcome to you good to see you here a uh, young buck chewy is in sean dubs is in anthony colvini is in um oh brambleberg gary per, uh, permenta kukla is in marcus shafari pascal amsterdam mitch Dieter, kukla five euro donation thank you very much for that really appreciate it thanks for the heads up on matic excellent so glad you got an matic kukla and a few others got in as well. They've kind of written to me and said they got an Matic after I kind of recommended it in the group. I wish they'd done a, a, an actual call on it when it crossed over in the four hourly, but them's, them's the breaks. Uh, Gary Stewartson, Dennis Van der Hayden, uh, Mervyn Skidmore, Argo Wishes, Nicky Sheldrake, John, Noho Bear, Tony P, um, Andreas, Axel, uh, Gordy Boy is in as well. Cookie is in, Smart People, Justin Churchill. Chris Moll is in as well. So good to see you all here. And as I said, this is your kind of time if you want me to look at kind of some charts and stuff like that as well. And somebody's saying, um, yes, camera angle. Excellent. Good, good. I've got two camera angles. So I've got another one here that will just kind of overplay on this. So I've got another kind of camera that I can use when I'm doing kind of close-ups um, as well. Or I want to kind of just go to the news or something like that. So can switch I can switch the cameras as well so I've got a couple of cameras um, and I've not got the scrolling there I should have the scrolling on the screen here as well like the scrolling here you can see the scrolling there so I'm going to put the scrolling on there that just gives a kind of disclaimer as well the scrolling which is good so I need to get that put on there as well and um, I'll do that so lots of things changing Um. So just go to some of the comments just now. Young Buck Chewy, see a great weekend, Steve. Thank you. Ready to tackle the week, the new week, the Young Buck Chewy. Excellent. Best way to start the week. Olo Sin. 
Yeah, with this up. So we're going to look at the kind of Bitcoin chart in a second. Um, time to go all shopping. TKY is uh, the most, is like most micro caps waiting at its bottom for BTC profit rotation devices. Yes, exactly. I think there's going to be a run for the alts, I think, this week. But we'll look at the kind of BTC charts as well and look at some of the other charts. Um, good morning. Oh, happy crypto spring, says John Noah Bear as well. Um, Mervyn Skidmore liking the new camera angle. Excellent. So we'll get a couple of camera angles. I need to get more lighting as well. I've only got the one kind of light, so I need to get um, some more lighting as well put in. Um, Ronnie Rowley is in. Good crypto morning, everyone. High Plains Drifter, how did to you? The statement Pundi moved is not an intro for the Python dead parrot sketch. So Pundi has moved. And it was kind of, uh, it just started moving just when they released a statement on Twitter um, as well. So I don't know if you noticed that, but I noticed and I thought as soon as they released the statement, I thought, oh, could jump in at nine um, Satoshi for Pundi X, but it already moved and jumped up to 10 and 11 Satoshi. David Schwartz is in. Good morning to you. Good to see you here. Beer's in the house. Um, Dennis van der Hayden still believe Metam is good. I do. I'm still holding out hope for Metamorph. Just now, they're still working on it. They're still, they've got version 2 out, bring version 2 out um, fully. Um, so, yeah, still, I've still got skin in the game for Metamorph and still talking about it, still checking up on it as well. And I like what they're doing. I still like what they're doing. I heard someday Superman was saying, just saying it was a shit coin, Metamorph. I don't think it is, but we'll need to wait and see. Uh, I don't think it is, though. And Gary Permenta... I know TKY is looking to do a YouTube update. They've been discussing who the CEO Catherine Lee should be interviewed by. Blockchain Brad is one, so it might be worth reaching out for TKY. I haven't really looked at TKY, Gary. I know you've uh, spoken about it a couple of times, but I haven't really looked at them. But yeah, I'd like to do. I'd like to interview everybody and just ask the same questions to everybody. Just say, okay, what is your project all about? And um, what's its use case scenario? Why is it different from the competition? So just set questions. Everybody knows the questions that's coming up and they just answer the questions. So just a 10 minute um, or a 10 minute crypto. I was going to call it 10 minute crypto, but I'll do something, might do something else. So lots of ideas and thanks to the admins and thanks to premium members as well in the group who've given me suggestions about what we could do with the channel as well to help to grow the channel. This was one of the suggestions, which was what I was going to do, but it was still a good suggestion, um, is to split the live up and do kind of the news channel on its own, just a shortened version uh, of it. So, because a lot of people can't spare an hour in the morning to watch. So I will be doing a video after this, a recorded one. It'll come out about an hour or two after this once I get it all um, production ready and everything. So looking forward to that. Um, no, it didn't, you pushed it. Um, that's uh, the sketch, I don't know if anybody's seen that, the Dead Parrot sketch in Monty Python, classic sketch. Um, Crypto Knowledge Alliance is in Jimbo. I haven't seen you for a while. I was just saying that the other day in the admin group. I haven't seen you for a couple of days. I thought you'd be doing your um, kind of thesis um, writing for the university. So good to see you here, buddy. Bruce Rudling is in. Rob UK, one of our brown admins, is in the house as well. Crypto Express News Morning All. So the news stories I get is from a Deb, a uh, brown admin, Rob brown admin, from James sometimes as well. Um, he's kind of pulling back a wee bit because it might be too much and I really appreciate that James Jimbo as well and Kim is really active in the groups uh, the admin group as well so big shout out to all the admins who are active just now uh, we had Davey, uh, Davey Dave who was back as well and um, we haven't seen a couple of the others for a while but big shout out to all the admins for all the work they do Katob is in, Crush Like saying Honest Crypto Journey as well good to see you ok we will go on to What's happening with Bitcoin? $6,975 for Bitcoin at the moment. I'm just um, going to go to the hourly chart and I can't do that on BLX. So I'm going to go to the Bitstamp price, 7029 And we'll go to the hourly. So what can we expect from here? If, if we get sideways movement for Bitcoin, I think what's going to happen, I'm just going to jump to... This view. I think what's going to happen with Bitcoin if we get sideways movement is that we're going to start seeing jumps in the alts. We're starting to see it kind of already, and we'll be looking at that um, in a wee sec. But 
you know, I'm just looking at that just now with Pundi X, jumping up 25% it's saying here. But we're starting to see kind of um, jumps in the alts already. Because when Bitcoin stabilizes, that's when you get people saying, okay, Bitcoin is stabilized. I can sell some Bitcoin just now and get into the alts again. And that's generally what happens. When Bitcoin shoots up in price, everybody's getting out of alts, going into Bitcoin. When Bitcoin shoots down, everybody's getting out of alts and going into USDT or USDC or PAX or whatever it is you want to go into. So it's only usually when Bitcoin stabilizes or they get to the BI stage. I was talking about the BI stage last week when I said um, the kind of alt traders just got a bug at it. I'm just going to get into the alts anyway. And that's exactly what happened with the likes of Matic. Uh, and Seller and BTT, I don't know if you notice something about all of these. So Seller, BTT, Matic, and um, kind of all went up and Fetch AI, I think they're in the top five or top five, uh, top six in Binance. And the similarity between them all is they were all previously launched on the launch pad on Binance, apart from Binance, which is his own Binance coin. So just very quickly look at that as well and see what's still up there. So BTT, Matic, Fetch AI, BNB, Seller. And if we look at this, Matic, Seller, Fetch AI, Bitton, and Binance. So I'm not saying anything, I'm just saying it's a, and um, this is, it's kind of strange coincidence that they're all um, previous launch pads, um, but they were at the bottom as well. They were on pre previously done on launch pad on Binance, but they were they were at the very bottom. Seller, we tried to get in before, tried to get in 500, 365, and kind of even below that as well at 175, but just kept on going down. Um, but they're all coming back up now. Matic has done fantastic. Um, I was telling people, a few people about that in the premium group and in the kind of free group as well. And if you want to join, you can do it down below. You can join us in the free group and the premium group. Um, as well if you want to get calls nearly every day I'm not making calls over the last few days because purely because Bitcoin has gone up and they also kind of bleeding out just now but we're going to get a situation where the alts are really going to start to come up and you're going to see 50% 100% 200% Matic for me okay I'm just going to briefly talk about Matic just now this is a layer 2 scaling solution but it's a scaling solution with a difference it's different from sellers different from raid networks different from POA looking at the other ones as competition and stuff like that. It's a bit different from that altogether. It's using Plasma um, as well, and it's going to scale, which means you can scale to maybe 10,000 transactions per second or something like that, and really kind of do that. Other kind of projects have spoken about it, and they're hoping to get up to that stage. But with the testnet coming out um, with Kinematic, um, I think that they're already near there. I think they're much further on than any of the other projects out there. But the thing for me when I kept um, seeing it was and looked at it into in, in more depth, I looked at it and thought, geez, this is only 6 million market capitalization. So it's now up to about 13 million. 13.3 million market capitalization. If this 10 X's, if this 10 X's, it only goes to 130 million. Now, the potential for Matic for me is absolutely huge. The more I look at it, the more I like it. And what I was going to do is, here's what I was thinking, okay, I thought I'm going to get into Matic. And I did get in and I got out again because it went down. And then I seen it going down further and I thought, brilliant, this is the price again. So I got into 56 Satoshi for Matic. And then it kept on going up. I think, should I get out and just buy with the profit? Should I get out and buy XRP and Cardano and just top up on them? And then I thought, well, that's kind of crazy when you think about it because I'm, I really think Matic long term could be an absolutely monster of a play. And I'm talking about 10x, 20x, 30x, 40x. As I said, if it gets to 10x, it's only 130 million, which puts it in the top 50. I think it's the top 50. So 130 million just outside the top 50. So put in the top 50. To get into the top 20, you're talking. Um, double, treble, treble that. So you're talking 45x just to get into top 20. And it could be that big. That's how big I think Matic could be if they deliver on the promises for the roadmap. Now they've got a big long roadmap as well, which is good. They've got it going into quarter one 2020, I think. Um, so they've got a year long roadmap um, as it stands just now. But what they're planning to do is just 
it could be huge. It could be absolutely huge. And I'm just hoping it's not another one of those kind of projects. And I don't think it is because I've watched the interviews with the CEO as well. Um, I just hope it's not one, another one of the projects where they don't deliver on their kind of roadmap promises. I think they're going to. Uh, I think they've, they've got, it looks like they've got a brilliant team as well. They've got the community behind them as well. And I just think it could be a monster play. Um, if you're not in it, uh, you might look for an opportunity to get in. Where is it just now? Um, 88, 87, 88. Satoshi looks as if it's going to go to 88, 90. It did get up as high as 92. But I think it's going to go higher than that. And I think on Hotbit, it's actually trading above. Because Binance, this is the thing as well. Binance, you cannot deposit and you cannot withdraw just now. You can trade on it, which kind of blows your mind just thinking about that as well. The people that are ring fence, people that are stuck in Binance just now, they can't do anything apart from trade from one coin to another. So they can go from Bitcoin to Matic, from Matic to Bitcoin or Matic to XR, but whatever, whatever they want. But they're choosing to trade on Matic. And so this is just ring fence. Nobody can move the stuff out or into Binance just now. And what's happening is on Hotbit, you're getting 114 Satoshi and 110. So it's trading between 110 and 114 Satoshi um, on Hotbit, albeit very small volume, almost seven Bitcoin worth, but still trading at premium on Hotbit um, just now because you cannot deposit or withdraw from Binance just now. So when that opens tomorrow, Binance is going to open deposits and withdrawals tomorrow. Then I think Matic could go even higher, and we're talking in the hundreds. Um, so we could jump another 10, 20, 30% from here once Bitcoin opens. There's going to be a lot of FOMO in this, I think. So I'm keeping my money in here just now. I'm keeping my money in Matic. Um, and then I'll wait and I'll pull back. I'll take profits off the top. I've learned from 2018. Take profits off the top, wait and I'll pull back and get back in for the long term. I think this is a, a huge potential. And I think it could be an amazing long term coin. And that's when I thought, why, why would I want to get more um, Cardano and XRP when I've got them already? But they're in the billions. They're actually 2 billion kind of market capitalization. Cardano is 1.6 billion. XRP is in the 2 bit where you can see what XRP and Cardano is. Just now, XRP 13 billion and Cardano 1.8 billion. Yeah, it's just now, obviously, with the Bitcoin price going up, that kind of market capitalization goes up as well. So I thought they're already at a mature stage. Yep, brilliant to have them. I think XRP are going to explode. I think Cardano is just going to go mental as well, and I think as a 10Xer for the future. But potentially Matic could be a 100Xer for the long term. And it's one of those rare ones that I've seen that I thought, okay, if I, I wouldn't mind parking $10,000 on this and just walking away for two years. It could be that good. Um, but that's enough about Matic. That's where we are just now. Okay, so we'll look at overall what's happening overall just now and then we'll go back to chat so we've got 211 billion market capitalization just now and um, that's where we stand just now Bitcoin is coming down it was at 7100 just over 7100 was coming back down again so we're at 7035 at the moment it says 7023 here and it's down 4.91% over the last 24 hours because it's had that parabolic rise as well. Who's the winners and losers? IXEC, RLC are in. Bitton is up. Binance, KuCoin shares won't change. Who will be token Horizon, uh, Dash, Arc. So it's not that many. You can see from there, there's a couple of um, stables in there. True USD, USD coin as well. So we've got about, what, 10% in the green, just in the green, and the rest are in the red. Aurora coin down 23%, Factum, Byte, uh, Bitcoin, Ravain, Bitcoin Gold, True Chain, Best Chain, uh, Bitcoin SV is down as well. So we can see here, if we go to Crypto Bubbles, this is the last 24 hours, red. It's kind of red all over the place. If we go to the last hour, we're starting to see a bit more green in the last hour, which indicates that people might be getting out of Bitcoin. Now, they could be getting out of Bitcoin and going into in packs or USDT or USDC. They could be doing that um, as well, but I think a lot of them are going to go into alt as well. I think we're going to have a mini alt run um, if Bitcoin does come down. 
unless it falls too fast. If it falls too fast, people are going to get into USDT or um, stables. Um, so I think I'll just say that from now on and just get into stables because I think it's going to change USDT. I don't think a lot of people are going to go into as much. So that's where we are in the, the last hour or so just now. So it's, it's getting greener. It's getting greener. Um, not quite as bad the last 24 hours when it was a total kind of red. Well, not total, but nearly most of them were in the reds. And this is a, a snapshot of the alts as well. Okay, we'll just jump back to chat. And this is your time. And who else? Cryptonology. I'm crushed under a pile of uni papers. I thought you might be. I thought you might be Jimbo. And um, Gareth Bassage is in. BTC new resistance around seven thousand one hundred fifty. Can we look at VPVR? We can look at VPVR. So this is on the one hourly. Uh, we'll look at it on the daily for VPVR. I need to change the settings on that. And just go to the hourly. So we've got 7235. And this is where it's kind of most traded. And we can expect to see kind of drop off points. So 7235, round about that figure. This is on the hourly. Um, next one up from that is about 7,300, 400 or something. Let's come down. Obviously, it changes when you change the time, time scale here. So 6275. Now, it kind of drops below this. We're going to get support around about 6800. Got support there. If it drops below 6800, we could be going down to about 6400. We're going to get 6400 there as massive kind of support as well. And if it drops below that, we're talking about 6200-ish. Um, on the, According to the VPVR, and this is where it's most traded, so when it gets to certain points, people get in, people get out. So it's most traded in these. This is what the VPR, um, VPVR shows you. So it's good to look at that. We showed you this last week. And um, we've nothing really above there unless we go to the weekly and the daily. And I want to show you this on the kind of weekly as well. I mentioned last week that we, for, the, for only the kind of third time in Bitcoin's history, we'd crossed over a certain point last week. So I'm going to show you this again because this is significant. We have to remember this. And it's even more significant about uh, what I'm going to show you just now as well. So I'm going to take the volume off. So we crossed over on the weekly chart, the 7 EMA crossed over the 50 EMA for the first time in about three years. Uh, only the third time in the 10 year kind of Bitcoin history that on kind of charts if we were charting it. So crossed over, which is hugely significant, hugely bullish as well. However, if we go back to the last time it crossed over, it was 2015. So it was the end of 2015, October 2015. So it crossed over at 285. It went up about 75%. Well, that was from the crossover. It went up, but it went up from its bottom on a closing about 120%. However, it gave back all its profits. It came back down 40, 41.8% before kind of climbing back up. So we've got to be aware, if we're looking at history, if we're looking at, and other traders do, um, look at history and just say, okay, we've gone up enough now, uh, we'll think about selling off. So if Bitcoin comes back down and sells off about 40%, we're looking at four and a half thousand dollars. If it takes off forty percent of its top, we're looking at four and a half thousand dollars, and then going back up again. Now I'm not saying that's going to happen. I don't feel that that's going to happen. But if we're looking at history, and we kind of have to do look at history because other traders look at history. Uh, I'm not a big kind of fan of that. But if other traders are doing it, we have to look at it as well. So we have to bear that in mind when we're doing TA as well. And I'm going to go to BTC USD, and I'm going to I'm go to BLX actually, and look at the daily and the weekly on it. So look at the weekly again. So that was when we kind of crossed over the last time in October 2015. The last time we crossed over previous to that was round about um, 2012. Kind of crossed over, and then we brought come back down about 50. It's about 
before going on another parabolic run. So it happened in 2012, happened in 2015, could happen again in 2018. So we might have a pullback here. If history repeats itself, we might have a pullback here of about 40%. But what's going to happen after that could be amazing as well. However, what we've also got to look at is where did it go when it crossed over at what point? So 120% at that point. It crossed over round about here. Went up 200% at its peak. Round about there, 200%. So we've only just crossed over. We've only just crossed over here. If we go to 100%, say 100%, we're talking about $11,000. So we might go to $11,000 before this we get a pullback. So if we look at 11,000 and then look at a pullback of 40%, so where does that leave us? 6,500. I'm thinking, and this is bold, I'm thinking we might go up to $11,000 first before we go back down the way. I don't think we're going to go down to $4,500. We may do that. I don't think that's going to happen. If we look at history, and look at it repeating itself and look at all that from that point of view and look at the momentum, the, um, the sentiment just now around Bitcoin. The, the retail investors are not even in Bitcoin yet. This is when the retail investors get in, when they see it going parabolic. For some strange reason, they'll not listen to anybody when they say, oh, Bitcoin's only $3,000, they go, oh, it might go lower. But when it starts going up and say, Bitcoin's gone up 150%, go, oh, it's time to get in now. The retailers, retail investors are just starting to get in just now. And this is where they're going to form more in. I think we're going to go up to eleven thousand dollars, then come back down to possibly six and a half thousand dollars, retrace, and then shoot up again. That might be the last fall that we have. I don't think it's going to go back down, and I don't think we're going to have two thousand dollars or one thousand dollars. I think this is. I think this is going to continue. I think we're going to continue upwards. So let me know what you think about that as well. If you think I'm just off my head and I'm crazy, and that's just mental then let me know. I'm always interested, but just the feeling and the sentiment that's in the markets just now, we could go to $11,000 before we come back down to $6,500. Um, we've got... Sean Dubs, would, uh, would Matic still be okay to buy into now, or do you uh, reckon there will be a pullback? For Matic... Um, Okay, so here's how I look at it. I think when Binance opens, here's what I believe, but remember this, is, please do your own research. Remember this is just my opinion. It's totally 100% biased because I'm in Matic just now. Quite big, I'm in Matic just now. Um, so I'm 100% biased. I think what's going to happen when Binance reopens tomorrow, it's deposits and withdrawals, I think there's going to be a lot of FOMO in Matic. If you're in... Binance just now, and you can trade, and you've got some Bitcoin, I would say to buy Matic at the moment. But I am 100% biased because I'm in Matic just now. Um, but I just think when it opens and we look, it's still 108 Satoshi and 114 Satoshi on Hotbit, albeit very low volumes. Um, I just think it's going to go a bit mental. And I think we could get up to 120. Um, and there's no, we can't look at TA on Matic. I think we're going to get up to about 120 or something. Then might be a, a slight pullback. But I think it could just go a bit crazy, even maybe higher than that. It could pull back. But the beauty of Matic is you could just say, okay, if it does pull back big time, it does go back to 60 or 50, then it's a brilliant long-term coin, a brilliant long-term project. And the, the market cap is just so low just now. And there's not another big release of coins until October. And it's going up again. It's starting to move up again just now. So I would say, in my opinion, totally 100% biased, I would say it is, it's going to go higher than this. I don't know if that helps or not, but that's my opinion. Um, Sean. London Bobby is in the house. Um, half a Addy from Guam. Steve, good to see you here. Brown to see you here. Crypto Knowledge Alliance. Moving Skidmore, I wish. Um, you don't need to keep all the receipts for the SU bar. I've missed something there, I've missed a conversation. Up to 65,000 transactions per second on each side chain of Matic. I think it's 
it kind of blows your mind when you think of the potential for Matic. For me, um, and you look at what they're doing and what they're trying to do. Um, Gather Passage, what do you think of Binance's new rule that you can't sell for higher than 30%? I think they've changed that now. Um, I think you asked that last week, Gareth, but I think they've changed that to 50% now. Um, let me know if I'm wrong there, anybody. But I think they've come out and said, okay, we're sorry for that. It was just for kind of security. They've changed that to 50% now. Um, um, I don't know what I think. I've never really kind of thought about it because I'm never going to do that. But I think they've changed it to 50% anyway. Um, Rob Fidley, Cardano looking good at these prices. Cardano looks brilliant at these prices. Um, for me, round about the kind of 1,000 level looks looks amazing at this price. And I do think Cardano is going to be one of the ones that just explode as well, along with XRP. Um, but I'm keeping my Matic just now because I was going to trade out Matic into Cardano and XRP and just top up on them. But I thought, but what's the point when, when Matic's got so much potential? B V chain. We'll look at that in a wee sec as well. Crypto knowledge lines. Thank you very much, Jimbo. Glad to catch live BTC monthly RSI. Looking very bullish long term. Also, thanks for all you do for the community, Steve. Keep it up, pal. Oh, thank you, Jimbo. Um, really appreciate the five pound donation there. Really, really appreciate it. And I know you're really kind of snowed under with your uni work just now. Um, but hopefully, we've been talking in the admin group as well. I know you've seen that as well. Hopefully, we're going to get a meet up at some point. So that'll be good to look forward to as well. And hopefully we'll get a meet up at the castle with everybody else as well, some stage. Um, v chain. Somebody was saying, look at V chain, and this is still Bitcoin. It's not really moving. Is that the right price? BTC USD seven zero three one. Obviously, on different exchanges, different prices. That's why the BLX price is different because they do an aggregate score of them, the best exchanges. Um, so VeChain. VeChain is going to be one of those ones, I think, is just going to shoot back up and you're going to get um, 100% on it. At the moment, if you were looking at the charts for VeChain, you just go, no way. You're not going to even contemplate getting into VeChain. If you look at the charts, 70 MA down over the 50 MA on the daily. It's on the four hourly as well. Starting to curve back up again, but just starting to do that on a four hourly. On a one hourly, we're just getting over to the crossover, and it's never crossed over since the 3rd of May, which is only 10 days ago, but and that's when Bitcoin started going up. So for me, what I'll be looking for, if you're looking at VeChain, is look for that crossover. We're just about to come up to it. I think this is a brilliant price for VeChain um, to get in on. But always kind of do your own research. I know I keep saying that, but do your own research, but it looks like it's a good price to get in on. You're just getting at 89.90 just now. We'll just look at that just now. That's Matic going up to 92.93. It's up another few percent points. VAT. 89.90. Look at the order books. 20 million to buy at 89. Satoshi. And 5 million to sell. So it looks like a good time. And I think the alts... Um, I'm going to start shooting up this week, but we need to wait and see how Bitcoin plays out. If Bitcoin starts shooting back up, then it's going to be a different story. We're going to see, we're not going to see more pullbacks on the alts. I just think it's going to be stable for the alts um, because they've started rising already. So you might see it going down to its all time low of 85, 86, 84. Um, but I don't think it's going to go much lower. I think there's going to be new money comes into the market. Um, retail investors getting in. I know I've had a few people asking me as well about Bitcoin because I've seen the Bitcoin price shooting up, which kind of blows my mind. They don't they don't pay attention to it at all when the Bitcoin price is really low. But when it goes higher, people just want to know as much as possible. Um, v chain does look good um, to me, to be honest. Um, I'm seeing a side of me you looking at your webcam, right? Ah, right. I forgot to change the view. That's it. I forgot to set it to live. So it's live now. Uh, thanks for that, Gareth. I <laughs> really appreciate that. I've been doing that for about the last 20 minutes or something. Uh, Pascal Amsterdam, thanks, Steve. Just going to Matic. Let's hope it will show up. Excellent. Um, I'm not saying it will. I just think it will. Once Binance opens tomorrow, I just think it's going to go higher. Um, I've got my big pipe. 
big boy pants on now. Can you do a video matic? Well, I was, I was going to do a video matic as well, and that's for the new because I'm going to be doing kind of more. Um, I'm going to be more full time in crypto. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at projects like that as well and just say, okay, this is my opinion on it, and just do 10, 15 minute videos, and even try and get 10, 15 minutes videos with the CEO as well. So I'd love to see an interview and um, with Anurag as well. That'd be fantastic if we could do that. Uh, Ronnie Rowley is in. Hey Steve, can you look at the SC coin? SC looks good as well. See a coin. I've seen it um, start to move up. Um, SCBTC. So it's crossed over on the hourly. I did go up to about 47. It's at 42 just now. And we'll look at it on Binance. We'll go to. And I think we're going to get the low Satoshi value coins. I think they're going to start jumping up soon as well. At the moment, um, on a four hourly chart, it's not a buy. Um, on the order books, if we look at the order books, 42 and 40, 41, 42, it looks as if it's going to go to 40, 41 just now. So it's not by the moment, but you've got support at 40. 10 Bitcoin worth, you've got good support at 35. Certainly on the order books, they can change it uh, on a whim. Um, people just pull out if they see it going too, uh, down too quick. So these could just be pulled any second, but it gives you an indication of where people's mindset is. So we want to look at that. So if we go down to the seven decimal places, and we'll see where the support lies. Support lies between 30 and 39. They've got 102 Bitcoin worth of support at that price, but can be pulled any time, but still good to look at where people's mindset is just now. Uh, between 40 and 49, the support of 10 Satoshi. So it looks as if it could come down and you've got a 50 to 59 and you've got resistance for 27 Satoshi worth. So it could go either way. It could go into the 50s. Uh, it could come down to low 40s, late high 30s. But you've got a lot of support there between 30 and 39. Certainly in the order books. And just remember that. I'm not saying there's a TA support. I'm just talking about the order books. But it's good to look at that, as I said. So I hope that helps. Um, Telstra, morning to you. Good to see you here. Debbie Clayton is in. Good morning to you. Uh, Max H, I'm still convinced I will gain a Bab semi detached house. I, I genuinely hope so, Max. I honestly hope. The people who are still in BAB just now genuinely hope that BAB goes up, they get their license, they re release news, and it just goes to the moon. Um, I'm not in it myself, as I said, you know that, you know the whole story behind that, but I genuinely hope that all BAB holders, and um, just now, it does, it shoot to the moon. Dirty Fergie 9, high state, BTT is pumping, and um, just now, we'll go to BTT. What's the order books? So we've got resistance at 11 Satoshi, $1.75 billion worth, not dollars worth, $1.75 billion tokens. Uh, to, to buy at 10 Satoshi is $1.1 billion. So we've got resistance there at 11, but that could be quickly eaten up. Um, and I think I've seen this at 9.10 as well, BTT. And Justin Sun came out about BTT as well. I kind of posted a tweet yesterday or the day before. Um, it kind of made me look at BTT again, just purely from a trading point of view, not from a, a fundamental point of view, from a trading point of view. Pundi X, 9.10. That was at 8.9. Can, even if you get in at 8, or even if you got on at 9 and sold at 10 for Pundi X, it's still a 12% a rise. And that's what I was kind of looking at. I thought, oh, could get in a 9, sell even 10 or 11. And you've got a good, good rise there, a good bit more Bitcoin. This is another one I thought this is a brilliant buy at this price. Um, 1718, but I think it's going to go down to 1617, is hot, whole chain. I think this, this represents a brilliant buy at these prices, but it could go down as low as about 11 Satoshi. So obviously you'd wait to see if it was going to go down, but... It looks like it's going to go to 16, 17. I think it's 17 would be um, represent a brilliant buying opportunity there as well for whole chain. There's just going to be so many opportunities because everybody, all the alts have hit their, well, a lot of the alts have hit their all-time low. Gina Dow is in the house. Oh, you're saying no sound. Um, oh, good. I had my volume down. I was going to say, I thought I'd been talking there for, right, <laughs> oh, good. Um, Gary, I downloaded an app from Google Play Store named Bolt. 
They cast media, including live sports, the streams instantly, which is impressive. Yeah, we looked at Bolt last week as well. I don't know what it's doing now. Um, Bolt, I don't know if it's the same one. Yeah, five and a half million. We did look at it, it is the same one. So it's down just now, obviously, with Bitcoin going up. But it's down at the moment. There's going to be so many opportunities um, just now. Uh, HXRP hands. Steve, can you please check OEX? OEX, I looked at the other day as well and looks. I thought, oh, this could um, jump up big time as well, but we'll have a, a wee look. Coming up for the crossover in one hour, which would, for me, indicate this is um, possibly a good time to buy in as well or hold. Just now on a four hour, obviously, you're not going to get that. Potential did spike to 6,554 and that's why I thought just for the recency effect that was only the 10th of April we were talking about four or five weeks ago for the recency effect it could jump back up here um, 0 EX but obviously you had this big spike as well up to 11,000 or 12,000 and um, so and then it came back gave up all its kind of gains and then went to close to its all-time low didn't quite get there so 2,000-ish 2000 2,100 is going to be the support for that and that's the all-time low but I think well, it's not the old time. I think we've got another one there. 1,930. We'll have to go to go to the weekly one just to see where the old time low is. A spike looking at the, the wick of 1,860. So we're close to the old time low and we did have that spike up to about 12,000 for zero AX. So if we've done that again, you're talking about four five hundred percent increase on that. Uh, I think that's a good opportunity for zero AX as well. And a lot of them are going to be like this. Um, uh, Steve, I've had a light bulb moment. We'll PM you until. Oh, excellent. I like these light, light bulb moments. Gino Dow, hi, Steve. Do you think Ada go to $25 this year? No. Um, no, I don't think so. Or Cardano. Uh, Gary Stewart had a dream Facebook bought out Bab to use as a payment coin. Stranger things do happen. Imagine if that happened. Imagine if that happened. I'd be so gutted because I'm out of Bab, but I'd be so pleased for everybody else. Um, I really would, genuinely. Bab is Facebook coin. Um, Crypto Knowledge Alliance. Excellent, yeah. Aloysius, uh, love my offer, Stuart. Steve, what's your thoughts on Smart Cash? I haven't checked it out. When I say I haven't checked out, it probably means I've not kind of gone in depth on it, but because sometimes I check it out very briefly and then I forgot I've checked out because I look at that many coins. But I don't think I've seen Smart Cash. I probably have, but I can't remember. It's way down and it's kind of all time high, obviously, as are most. 1.1 billion it was before. It's now 14 million. Yeesh. Yeesh. What's that down? It says it's down 39%. Since it came out, ah, oh, that's since it came out here because it's around about that price, yeah. 14 million. Um, markets, obviously, on a lot of markets. The BTC stakes, not in the big markets, though. Social, always have to look at social. May the 10th. Checking out social. I've not checked it in depth, obviously. I'm um, just looking at the fundamentals, not the fundamentals, but looking at the underlying. So, max supply is 5 billion, total supply 2 billion, circulating supply 1.4 billion. So, it can only ever go up to 5 billion. A lot of um, companies don't do the max supply or don't report it. And it's good volume as well. So, it looks okay. Uh, as I said, I've not looked into it uh, deeply. Uh, HXRP hand, thank you, my pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, OEX um, does look a good one. Uh, we'll go to all the crypto and see what's kind of up just now. Commerce data connection is up 132%. These are the, the ones that have been traded over $10,000 worth. Um, I thought I said scrotum coins there, but scrotum coins, not scrotum coins. Scrotum coins is up 84.94%. Cloudbrick is up 77% on 96,000 volume. Um, Park Genie is up 59% on 18,000. What's one with a big volume? Happy Coin, 53%, 1.2 million. Um, market capitalization. Mainstream 
for the underground. I've seen that a couple of times. Still only a market cap of 48,000, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, but volume is 444,000. Hmm. But sus, but I don't think I don't think it could be true if it's, you've only got a market cap of 48,000. Function X, FX uh, is up 39%, uh, 1.1 million market cap, 46,000 volume. Quite like, I've kind of seen this a couple of times, Exob Bank, or Zob Bank, I don't know how you pronounce that, 26.39%, 380,000. I think they were kind of similar to BAB as well. Matic Network is up 26%. I think it's higher than that now. No, it's not. It will be around about there. So it's still, there's going to be loads of opportunities there. That's what I want to do with the channel as well, kind of report on hidden gems, but I'm not going to do it every day. Um, I might do it kind of once a week. I'll do a coin of the week as well. Yeah, so that will be good as well if we could do that. Time we're on 9.16. Uh, Baron Rothschild, Monero. I'm too late for my favourite show, says Nulls Bull. Oh, sorry about that. You can watch a replay. We'll just jump on Monero. Monero Binance. Yeesh. So this is on a weekly. Nearest all-time low. Uh, personally, I've never really been interested in Monero, just um, cause, so I don't know what they've been up to um, recently. I've not, I've not really been too interested in it. I know a lot of people are. And um, we'll just look on the daily. So we'll go micro. So on the daily, if you look in the TA, it's not a buy. On the four hours coming up, for a buy, let's go two hours. Uh, just crossing over in the two hours. So it looks like a buy at the moment. There's going to be, uh, if you're in a premium group just now, you're going to get bombarded with calls because there's going to be loads of calls coming up in the next couple of days if Bitcoin stabilizes or just slowly goes up. And um, we're going to get a lot of these kind of calls, but maybe not to my criteria. You know my criteria if you're in a premium group. If you want to join us in premium, there's a link down below. Brilliant chat and you get calls nearly every day apart from when Bitcoin's like this and it's just shooting up. So on the hourly, Monero's just crossed over. So it's a buy on the hourly, short term. Um, it's a buy if you're trading it. And it could be for long term as well, obviously, if you like um, Monero. Um, a lot of talk about football coins in the market this year, worth keeping an eye on. Could be. B. Could be B. Um, Crypto and all giants, there's a few scrotum coins out there. ERB and Bitcoin Egg come to mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A scrotum coin, quite like that. Uh, Gina Dow was watching Crypto Chris and comparing um, with the alts last year up over 380%, i.e. Tron and other coins. Uh, is that Crypto Bitcoin Chris, Crypto Revolution? I was watching his news channel this morning as well. Um, I didn't see the comparable with, or oh, maybe I've just missed a bit. Baron Rothschild, thanks. Jeff Calhoun, Engine Coin, I think Engine Coin's a good one as well, and there's a couple of other coins that are well, not similar, but in the gaming industry as well, I was talking to someone this morning about that, and they look quite good, but Engine Coin itself, probably the biggest one, and most advanced one probably. I come right back down, this is on the hourly, we'll go on the daily, get a macro view. So this is perfect, um, if you look at this from a TA point of view, and I've got the lines kind of set there already. So it did shoot up to around about 6,407. 6,400 is shot up to. We're now down to 2,000. So it's lost 66%. I'll just get an exact figure where you are just now. 68%. It's lost 68%. When the Fibonacci retrace level, if we do it from the crossover, we're exactly on the 78.6 level and for the bounce up. So it could be a good time to get in here. There's going to be some resistance at around about the 61.8% level, uh, which is 2,908. So this could be a brilliant time. We spoke about this last week, saying 1,900 was a good time to get in. It's now 2,050. Still a good time to get in for Engine Coin as well. Uh, Engine Coin, one of the biggest kind of gaming ones out there. Um, we'll be on market cap of 108 at the moment. And we did have a market cap of 157 recently. We have had it kind of much higher before at 368 million. That's when Bitcoin was up to 20,000, obviously. But recently, 
we'll put up to much higher, 157 million. So I think you've got a good 50% um, coming up for Engine Coin as well. Uh, Gina Dow, yes. Ah, right, was watching you, yeah, accepted by Congress. With the alts last year up over 380%, are you trying? So we're talking about the, the overall alts market. We go to total two, this is without Bitcoin. So we'll go to the weekly. So this is essentially the alts market. Just now I was putting in all these Vs because I've seen all these Vs looking for patterns, always looking for patterns. Patterns in life everywhere if you're willing to look for them. So these V ones. Yeah, so this time last year, where were we this time last year? 18th. I'm talking about May. We're kind of down from last year, so I don't know. The alts market itself and see where the alts market has gone uh, up to though and we came down this is obviously back in January as well and BTC kind of level as well we're coming we're coming up for a crossover there as well on a weekly and we've not seen that in a while so that could be a huge indicator as well Yeah, that could be a huge indicator. They were coming up for a crossover on a weekly. And this is for the um, crypto total market capitalization without Bitcoin. Obviously, you've got with Bitcoin, you've got 202 billion. And I think it's more than that just now. We're saying 202 billion there just now. Again, coming up for a crossover. Never had a crossover since November 2015. So there's loads and loads of bullish signs that we're coming up for a major run and we could go up to eleven thousand um, dollars and for bitcoin before coming back down to maybe possibly six six and a half and then a bounce back up if we're looking at kind of history or looking at it historically jeff calhoun thanks for checking my pleasure okay i think i'm going to leave it there just now i don't think i think i've covered everything so we're not i'm going to do a separate news um Kind of video i'll just do that separately but if you can come back when you see it when you see the notification and um, get up if you've not got notifications turned on just hit the bell button so you get a notification and just like it and i'm just going to go over the news and some thoughts that i have on either projects coins or trading points of view so do that as well so that'd be great if you could do that and i'm just getting used to this new format and um, which is not checking the news but to take one look uh, last look at binance see what's happening on binance see who the Winners and losers are Matic still up at 90. And 90, 91 looks as if it's going to go to 91, 92. There's losers. Bitcoin Gold. So all pages are going green. So we are going on a, an alt run just now on Binance. Everything is rising apart from a few. There's only one page of reds on Binance just now. Whereas there was only one page of green before. So literally there's only about 12 coins that were in the green and we just got as low as five coins in the green because bitcoin is um, rising so high and we'll just go to the bitcoin price just now 7044 so this is because bitcoin is kind of stabilizing kind of so this is over the last couple of days it's going to come down but from here 12th of may that's only yesterday obviously but it's kind of stabilizing um, on a four hour chart, which is good for the alts. So we're going to start to see alts pumping. So I'm going to have to look at the charts as well. Okay, thank you very much for watching everybody. Really, really appreciate you. And hopefully you like the new format as well. Look out for the kind of news video as well and like that and look out for any other videos that I do. I'll be doing a lot more content wise and I might be doing news videos over the weekend as well. Um, I was dying to do one this weekend. Somebody um, suggested that I go live for the weekend. Um, but I just wasn't ready um, to do it. But because Bitcoin price was going too high, I thought, oh, this, I need to do a video, but I didn't. I just didn't do it. So I'm, I might do kind of videos over the weekend as well, um, just to get to you every single day. Not get to you, but just to keep you informed every single day. 
Um, okay, thank you very much again, everybody. Really appreciate your time. And hit those like buttons, kind of pass this on, share it in groups or whatever. If you know any CEOs or if you're in connection with any kind of CEOs of good projects, um, let me know. Just write to crypto at your digital uh, and I'll get back to you as well because um, I'd love to interview and just do the 10, 15 minute interviews. Not long ones, not in depth, just um, talking to the CEOs. I think when you can see the whites of people's eyes uh, and they're talking, i.e., the CEOs, and they're talking, you get a vibe from them, you get an energy from them. Um, and I think I think that's the best thing I've done when I've been looking to get into kind of coins um, and a lot of projects. I've seen the whites of the eyes. Then I thought, well, oh, I don't trust that person. I've got out, and it's been the right thing to do. So I think from that point of view, I think it's really good to interview CEOs as well. But just 10, 15 minutes, and you'll get a, a vibe from them as well. Okay, I'll leave it there just now. Until next time, namaste. Take care. Bye now. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.